Welcome to Adupedia World Grade 10 Computer Science Video Lecture Series. I'm Mufeka Vendibona and from this episode we are going to talk about properties of algorithms. Algorithm is the thread that tie together most of the subfield of computer science. Donald Knuth is a well-known scientist who have done most of his work in this field, algorithms. He once said something like this about algorithms. Something magically beautiful happens when a sequence of commands and decisions is able to marshal a collection of data into organized patterns or discover hidden structure. Donald Knuth Generally, an algorithm is a systematic list of instructions for complete some task. And the task can be anything that has a recognizable endpoint or a result. Often, some of the specific steps in the procedure are to be repeated until the task is done. Normally, there are different algorithms for the same task, some better than the others. For an example, let's take a cooking recipe. It's a kind of an algorithm. Some recipes for making potato salad have peeled the potato before boiled the potato, while some have the boil step before the peel step. But they all call for those steps to be repeated for however many potatoes they are, and they all end when the potato salad is ready to eat. Okay, from the previous episode, we talk about optimizing algorithms. In other words, it's about making effective methods or procedures. A procedure that produces the solution of some class of problems to a series of road steps, which, if followed to the letter and as far as may be necessary, is bound to always give some answer rather than ever give no answer, always give the right answer and never give a wrong answer, and always be completed in a finite number of steps rather than in an infinite number, work for all instances of problems of the class. So if all of these things are satisfied, then it is perfect. Now, if we explain the process of the algorithm in more formal words, we can say something like this. Starting from an initial state and initial input, perhaps empty, the instructions describe a computation that, when executed, proceeds through a finite number of well-defined successive states, eventually producing output and terminating at a final ending state. In this explanation, I want to highlight the key terms. Finite list of well-defined instructions, eventually produce output and termination of the final end. These characteristics are important to create an effective algorithm. The order of the computation is always crucial to the functioning of the algorithm. And that's why we make a precise list of precise steps in the algorithm. Instructions are usually assumed to be listed explicitly and are described as starting from the top and going down to the bottom. It is an idea that is described more formally by the key term, flow of control. Now, if you are still wondering why we need to learn about the algorithms in a subject like computer science, then I would say algorithms are essential to the way how computer process information. Because a computer program is basically an algorithm that tells the computer what specific steps to perform in what specific order to carry out a specific task, such as calculating the employee's paychecks or printing the student's report cards. So, as I said earlier, it is a thread that tie together most of the subfields of the computer science. And that's why we need to learn about the algorithms. Okay, now it's the time to go for our main topic in this episode, properties of an algorithm. An algorithm must possess the following properties. Finiteness, definiteness, input, output, and the effectiveness. Finiteness means the algorithm must always terminate after a finite number of steps. Definiteness means each step must be precisely defined, the actions to be carried out must be rigorously and 
unambiguously specified for each case. Remember, we talk about these properties when we talk about the definition for the algorithm. The property input, an algorithm has zero or more inputs taken from a specified set of objects. The property output, an algorithm has one or more outputs which have specified relation to the inputs. The effectiveness means all operations to be performed must be sufficiently basic that they can be done exactly and in finite length. Now keep in mind these five properties because using these five properties you can come up with a definition to the algorithm. Finiteness talking about the termination, definiteness talking about being precise, input, output and being effective. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between problems, algorithms and programs. In this world there are a lot of problems and we can categorize them into several classes. Polynomial class, non-polynomial class, we call it as NP class, and then NP complete class. So likewise, there are several categories of classes. Knowing these categories of classes is not under our scope, you will learn them in the near future. So for each problem or class of problems, there may be many different algorithms, as depicted in this illustration. For each algorithm, there may be many different implementations. We call it as programs. So all of this means we create algorithms by solving the problem and we create programs to use the algorithm. As a whole, what we can understand is before creating the algorithm, we have to understand the problem. After creating the algorithm, we have to implement it using a program to use the algorithm. Now, how to express algorithms? We can use number of ways. We can use a natural language, we can use a flowchart, a pseudocode, or the programming language itself. Natural language is usually verbose and ambiguous. Flowcharts avoid most issues of the ambiguity, but difficult to modify without specialized tools. But it is largely standardized. Pseudocode also avoid most issues of the ambiguity. Vaguely resembles common elements of programming language, but no particular agreement on syntaxes. And the programming language tend to require expressing low-level details that are not necessary for a high-level understanding. So these are the four methods that we can use to express an algorithm. Before using the programming language to implement the algorithm, most of the people use the flowchart and the pseudocode. Okay. Now we know how to express an algorithm, but how do we know whether an algorithm is actually correct? So here we are going to talk about testing correctness and proving the correctness. First, the logical analysis of the problem we performed in order to design the algorithm should give us the confidence that we have identified a valid procedure for finding a solution. Second, we can test the algorithm by choosing different sets of input values carrying out the algorithm and checking to see if the resulting solution does in fact work. But no matter how much testing we do, unless there are only a finite number of possible input values for the algorithm to consider, testing can never prove that the algorithm produces correct result in all cases. Therefore, we have to prove a correctness by using another procedure. So for that, we can attempt to construct a formal mathematical proof that if the algorithm is given valid input values, then the results obtained from the algorithm must be a solution to the problem. We should expect that such a proof be provided for every algorithm. In the absence of such a proof, we should view the purported algorithm as nothing more than a heuristic procedure which may or may not yield the expected results. Now we are talking about implementation aspect of the algorithms. Once a formal description has been obtained, an algorithm is a well-defined method or procedure. It more often implemented as computer programs, but can also be implemented otherwise, for example as electronic circuits or mechanically. Also, they may be performed directly by humans. Think, for example, of an abacus. 
The general study of algorithms is a central part of computer science, going further than in programming languages, which are designed for practical implementations. As an example of an algorithm, here is a simple one. Imagine you have a random, unsorted list of numbers. Our goal is to find the highest number in this list. First, upon thinking about the solution, you will realize that you must look at every number in the list. Upon further thinking, you will realize that you need to look at each number only once. Taking this into account, here is a simple algorithm to accomplish this. The first step. Pretend the first number in the list is the largest number. The second step, look at the next number and compare it with this largest number. The third step, only if this number is larger, then keep that as the new largest number. Step 4, repeat step 2 and 3 until you have gone through the whole list. At the end, you will be able to find the highest number in the list. Now, most of the time, Algorithms are written in computer code. Remember the slide we discussed about expressing algorithms? There we discussed about four ways to express algorithms. So computer code is a one way. And what we shown in here is a pseudocode. It is a most formal notation that is similar to most programming languages. Pseudocode is not actually a programming language. It shows the general form of any programming language. Most people that implement algorithms want to know how much of particular resource, such as time or storage, a given algorithm requires as it happens. So, there are methods which have developed for the analysis of algorithms to obtain such quantitative answers. Going through that analysis is not under our scope, but anyway, I'll give you the basic idea. So in this pseudocode, it expresses the algorithm for our problem finding the highest number in the list. We are given an unsorted number list and there is a certain length for it. We start from the index 0 and we assume the number in the index 0 of the list is the largest number. And then we start our looping. While counter is less than length, we do this comparison. In the comparison, we check whether the current item that we get hold of in the list is larger than the largest item that we have captured previously. If so, we take this current item that we get hold of as the largest number. And then we increase the counter and repeat this comparison again until the end of the list. So this means this comparison is repeated all through the items in the list. If the list have n items, that means this comparison is gone through n times. With that, we can determine that this algorithm has a time requirement of big O n, where the big O notation was used and n stands for the length of the list. So that's the basic idea of analyzing the algorithms using pseudocode. And with that, we are going to wind up this session. In this session, we came up with a formal definition to the algorithms using five important properties finiteness, definiteness, input, output, and being effective. And then we learn about expressing algorithms using four ways. Using a natural language, flowcharts, pseudocode, and programming language. And from the next episode, we will focus more on this expressing algorithms. So for that, stay tuned on with Edupedia World and thank you for watching.